Hi, I'm Chelsea of Friday Pattern Company and today we're going to be doing the Beachcomber Sew Along. So the Beachcomber Jacket is a part of our day trip collection. Three patterns that we just released and this is the third sew along. So we already did the Rainbow Pants and then the Old Coast Raglan. So the Beachcomber Jacket is the, I'd say an intermediate level sewing pattern. It has welt pockets and that's probably like the trickiest part. But other than that, I'd say it's totally achievable for the confident beginner. We're going to go over every step. It's a really cool jacket that has options for a collar or a hood, and we're going to show you both options. I'm making this in just a cotton canvas. This is about, an, I'd say, an 8-ounce cotton canvas. And for the lining, I picked up this quilted lining at Blackbird Fabrics, a jacket a little bit of extra body and warmth. And yeah. There's a lot of steps involved, so it is kind of a longer video, but yeah, we'll take you step by step and at the end of it, we'll have a jacket. So let's get started. We'll get started with the prep and our first step is to transfer our mark welt placement onto the right and wrong side of our front A. So this is our welt placement mark and I'm gonna show you how I will transfer that. So I've got my paper scissors here and I'm just gonna cut it open. I'm going to carefully cut this line open along this center and the little short diagonal lines. Now I have this piece laid out on top of my front A piece and I've got it right side facing up. I'm just going to make sure that the pattern piece is aligned and then you're just going to fold back along this line so that you have a line that you can trace. This is a friction erasable pen so it comes out pretty easily, but it leaves a really good mark, so I love it. And once I've traced that one, I'm just gonna fold over the other side so that I can get the top of this little, these little Y marks. If you want to trace out the whole box, you can, but it's, I don't, I find it gives me too many lines, so I'm not going to. That's kind of a personal preference thing. I'm also adding this mark to the wrong side of my front A, so I flipped my piece over, and then I'm just gonna flip my pattern piece over and unfold one of them so that I can reference this point on the front and the back. You're going to repeat that with both front A pieces. Another quick note, the fabric that I'm using is the same on the right side and the wrong side, so I'm just marking the wrong side with a little piece of tape so that I'll know when I'm looking at my piece, this is wrong side facing up, that's right side facing up. Next up, I want to mark this chest pocket placement on the right side of my front A, so I have it right side facing up already. This is our chest pocket placement. It just shows us where we're going to put that pocket on the chest. <laughs> so I'm going to fold it back at this line. And I'll make sure my pattern piece is still lined up. And I'm just going to mark the corner and the upper line right here. And then you can just kind of add in a little line if you want it. And there's my pocket placement. You'll repeat that on both front pieces. Now we're going to move on to the fusing portion of the prep instructions. Here we have our welt piece D's right side facing up and I'm just going to fuse interfacing onto them. Facing, fusible interfacing will have kind of a nubby side. That is the side that has the glue and then there's a um either this is like a cotton one but if you have like a papery one, that'll be the papery side. So gluey side down. I'm setting the interfacing down. And then you just use a hot steamy iron and give it a good press. And the interfacing will fuse to the pattern piece. You're going to repeat this process with your welt piece Ds, your front facing M, and then one of your collar K pieces. And finally, on front A, on the wrong side, we're going to fuse a little scrap of interfacing onto the back welt marking. So I have my welt marking on my front and my back, if you remember. And I'm just going to place some interfacing over that welt marking and give it a press. Here I have my chest pocket C piece wrong side facing up. And we're just going to press this upper edge under 3 eighths of an inch. Now with right sides together, we're going to fold back. We have these notches right here. We're going to fold back at the notches. So we'll take this to the sewing machine and sew 3 eighths of an inch from the edge on either side just along this little short edge. Here I have that sewn on both sides. Now we're going to flip it right side out 
you can pinch, carefully pinch the corner and get as close to the seam allowance as possible and then neatly push that through and then give it a good wiggle and you should get a really crisp corner. So now we're going to give that a good press and we'll press each of the edges under 3 eighths of an inch. Now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we are going to edge stitch 1 eighth of an inch from this folded edge going across the pocket and we're going to repeat this with both chest pocket seats. Here I have my two front A pieces with right sides facing up. You can see our pocket placement marks right here. And we're going to grab our pockets that we just sewed. And we're going to pin them in place on our front A's. So I'm just lining up the corners and adding some pins to hold the, the pocket in place. But not so many that our pocket's going to be all wrinkled up or anything like that. So we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to sew around this outer edge of our pocket. We're going to backstitch at the beginning and the end and then we can also add bar tacks into the corner and I can show you that over on the sewing machine. A couple tips for when you're edge stitching or top stitching something that will show on the face. I like to use a longer straight stitch so I'm using a three and a half millimeter long stitch. You can set your needle up so that your pocket, so I'm putting this under here, and then I want to sew as close to the edge as possible. So I'm moving my needle over. Most sewing machines will let you change the position of your needle. So I can have my pocket passing comfortably under the presser foot, rather than having to have it all the way off over to the side. And then I can just align my needle over to get close to that edge. When you get to a corner like this, you'll lower your needle, you'll lift up your presser foot, and then you can pivot your project, lower your presser foot again, and then sew. On my machine for the bar tack, I do a zigzag and then I just shorten the length of the zigzag down to the minimum, which is 0.2 millimeters. And then I'm just going to line it up so that the one side of the bar tack will be right on this seam. Sometimes I like to walk the first few steps of my bar tack just to make sure that it's being placed where I want it because it's kind of hard to remove. And there she is. Here's those two pockets done. And now we are going to start on the welt pockets. Grab your pocket welt D. And we are just going to fold it in half lengthwise, right sides together. And then we're going to sew up these short ends. You'll sew 3 eighths of an inch from the edge and you'll do both short edges and then you'll repeat with both pocket welt pieces. Here's that sewn and now we're just going to, again like we did before, pinch it, flip it right side out and take it to the iron and give it a good press. Here I have that pressed and now we're just going to baste a quarter of an inch from this raw edge we're just gonna baste the two layers of the welt together. So just stitch along this edge. And here that is sewn up. Here I have my front A piece right side facing up and here is my pocket welt. This is the edge that we just basted together over here. And it is placed onto the front like so. So that that raw edge is facing towards the side seam. And then we are just going to baste this in place one quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric. As you can see, my pocket welt is lined up with that raw edge butted up against that center line on our welt marking. And when we sew this at a quarter inch right now, we're going to start at the beginning of the welt and we're going to end at the end of the welt. We're not going to stitch off the edge at all. And you want to make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Just a quick note to say that for the pocket linings, I'm using a different lining fabric because I'm using that thick quilted fabric. I wanted to use something that would be add a lot of bulk in the pocket area, so I'm just using this double gauze. Grab your pocket front E piece and that is going to go right sides together, so that would be face down on your front A. There's notches on your pocket front E that will match up with the ends of your pocket welt. So I'm just placing that right on top, matching the notches, and then I'm pinning that in place. 
In this step, you're going to stitch between the notches, 3 8 of an inch from the edge going across. You'll back stitch at the beginning and the end, and you will not stitch past the notches. So this little extra bit will remain free. Now you're grabbing your pocket back F, and it's kind of the same deal, except for that you aren't going to be sandwiching your welt in this step. But the raw edge of your pocket back F is going to match up with the raw edge of the pocket front, and then notches butt up against each other. And then we're going to stitch between the notches, 3 eighths of an inch from the edge. Again, not stitching past these notches, and back stitching at the beginning and the end. Here's that sewn up, and now we're going to cut this open, and what I do is grab a snip from the front, just to make the first hole. So you can snip, once you've snipped in, you can kind of snip up towards the top and the bottom carefully. And in this step, I'm just being careful to not cut through my pockets or my welt in any way. And then you can flip it over to the back, and we want to cut up these little Y arms and get as close and get as close to our seam as possible without cutting through it. That's what's going to get let our welt turn really nicely. So here we have the welt opening cut open, and I've got my pocket front and pocket back sewn on this side. Now we're going to pull the pockets through. So I'm just going to pull them all the way through. And this takes a little bit of doing. You have to press the seam allowance back down on each side, and you can use your iron to give it a good press. The welt itself can be pushed towards the side seam. You're going to want to flip it to the right side and see if you have any puckers. If you're getting any puckers, you can go in and clip closer to the corner so that you're clipping as close as possible to the seam without clipping through it. Now we're going to understitch our seam allowances to our pocket bags. That will be done by just grabbing, you want to get your seam allowance and your pocket in this step. And you're just going to stitch 1 8 of an inch from the edge. You're catching the seam allowance underneath, but not the front of the jacket. And you're also going to do this on this side. So then you'll just grab this seam allowance and this bag and you'll stitch 1 8 of an inch from the edge. And this is just gonna hold the pocket bags from rolling forward so that they stay tucked in. Here I have both seam allowances understitched to their respective pocket bag. The next step will be to flip your pocket back down on top of your pocket front. We're matching up this outer edge and we're gonna stitch all the way around on just the pocket backs. In this step, you wanna make sure that you are catching this little triangle, so there's a little triangle right here that was cut when you trimmed open your welt opening. You're gonna catch that in your seam allowance. I'm catching that corner again over here and you'll use a 3 8 inch seam allowance going all the way around and just get as close to that corner as you possibly can. Here's that pocket sewn up and then now we can flip it to the front and we'll give this a good press. Now we are going to top stitch one eighth of an inch along this short edge of our welt, just top stitching it in place. So it gets stitched to the body, the front of our jacket, not the pockets. And the pockets should be out of the way in this step. And there's a welt pocket finished and you're gonna do repeat those steps on both sides. Here I have both of my front A pieces laid out right side facing up. Don't worry about this, I got my steamy iron got a little overzealous. Right sides together, we are going to pin front to back at the shoulder seams. So that's these up here. You're going to use a 3 8 inch seam allowance to sew these together, and then you'll press the seam open. Here's that sewn up and pressed open. I'm going to show you the... This version is going to be with the collar, but I still want to show you how to sew the hood. So we're going to sew the hood now, but it'll be different fabric and it's not actually going to be attached to this jacket. Here I have my side hood and my center hood and we're going to pre-press some edges right now. So on the center hood, at these upper notches, we're pressing the raw edge under. So 
on our side hood, I will also be pressing under at these notches right here. And I'm gonna repeat that with both pieces. Now we're gonna pin our side hood to our center hood. So with right sides together, we are matching notches going around the curve. So that first clip that I'm adding is kind of matching up those pre-pressed edges. And then you can just follow along the curve of your hood and you have a lot of notches that you can match along the way. It does take a little bit of working everything into place just because of the curved edges. Just use a good amount of pins and everything should fall into place. So now we take this over to the machine and we sew it using a 3 8 inch seam allowance going all the way around this curved edge. Then we're gonna repeat with this side. Here I have that sewn up and I'm just gonna clip around the edges. So I'm clipping this curve but I'm not clipping through my seam allowance, just right up to it. You'll repeat that on both sides. And then we're going to press the seam towards the side hood on both sides. When pressing near this edge that you have a pre-press on, just be careful to preserve it because uh, you want that as a reference later on down the road. Okay, so there's our hood for now. We are going to repeat the same process that we did when we sewed the side hoods to the center hood with our lining. I already have that here. And then we're going to also clip this seam allowance and press the seams towards the side hood. Okay, here I have my hoods, my main fabric, and my lining fabric. And now these are going to be sewn right sides together, matching up this center front seam. I'm just pinning these in place. and. For this, you will match up a notch at the top, and then these seams match up on the lining in the main fabric. The hem of the hood will match up, and I'm just gonna add a couple more along here. Okay, so now you'll take this to the sewing machine and sew it using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, going all the way around. Here is that sewn and now we are going to turn it right side out and it will fold back at that pre-pressed edge. So now we can stitch in the ditch. So this is our ditch right here, the seam, just going around the opening and that's going to hold our main fabric in place so that our lining is hidden, you know, at the very edge of our hood. So here's that done. I have my main fabric stitched in place. The last step with our hood is to baste across the bottom a quarter of an inch from the edge and we're just joining the lining to the main fabric. When this gets sewn into the neckline, it all gets held nicely in place. Here's that last step done. So now this will, so for our sew long sample, we're doing a, a collar, but this would be sewn in the same way as the collar. The neckline is the same, it has the same notches. So, yeah, so we'll go back to the collared version now, but this is just kind of a visual of how you would sew the hood. Next up, we're going to be sewing our collars together. So I have two collar pieces. One is interfaced, one is not, and we're going to pin those right sides together. You'll take this to the sewing machine and sew it using a 3 8 inch seam allowance going around these three sides, leaving this edge unsewn. Here's that sewn up and now I'm just going to clip the corners. I'm clipping as close to that corner seam as possible without clipping through it. I'll repeat on the other side. And I'm also just going to trim down the seam allowance a little bit. Now I'm going to flip this right side out and take it to the iron and press it. Here I have that flipped right side out and pressed. So now you're going to baste this lower edge shut a quarter inch from the edge, just sewing through the two layers of the collar. That'll just keep it in place while you are sewing it to the body of the jacket. Another option you have here is to top stitch around the outer edge of the collar an eighth of an inch from the edge. Okay, so our collar is sewn and I have my jacket facing right side up. And I just want to show you on this because it's easier to see the notches, but you have a lot of matching notches on your collar. These two match up with two with a double notch at the center back of your neckline. These two match up with notches on your back neckline. These two match up with your shoulder seams. And then the end of your collar is going to match up with a notch on the neck, front neckline of your jacket right here. 
And if you were pinning in the hood, it would be the same way where the end of the hood is going to match up with this and then you have all the same corresponding notches. I have the interfaced side of my collar facing up and I'm pinning it to the right side of my jacket. So I like to go through and match up all of the notches and then go in and add a couple more um, pins or clips just for good measure to hold everything perfectly in place. You're going to sew this using a one quarter inch seam allowance starting from one end of your collar or hood and sewing to the other end. Now we're going to pin in the sleeves. I have the body of my jacket right sides facing up and then I'm just going to grab my sleeve. These are being pinned right sides together so you can see I've got my wrong side facing up. And on your sleeve you have a single notch on the front, a notch at the top of the sleeve, and then a double notch on the back. So I like to start at the center. That top notch <laughs> matches up with the shoulder seam. The single notch matches up with a single notch on the front of your jacket. The double notch matches up with a double notch on the back of your jacket. Now I'm going to add in some more clips to get every to secure everything in place. And this can be a little fiddly because these shapes are really different, but if you just kind of work your way down the arm side, everything will fall into place. Now we'll take this to the sewing machine and sew it using a 3 8 inch seam allowance going all the way around our arm side. And then we're going to press that seam allowance towards the sleeve. And then we'll repeat that on the other sleeve. Here I have my sleeve sewn in and I have pressed that seam allowance towards the sleeve. Now I'm going to flip my jacket inside out. So now we're going to match up the underarm of our sleeve this underarm seam right here, and then our side seams, and we're gonna stitch them all in one go. So we're gonna stitch this using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, starting down here, and we're going to stitch all the way to our underarm seam and then all the way to the hem, and you're gonna repeat that on both sides. And here is that sewn up. Our next step involves our sleeve elastic casing piece Q. We're going to grab our elastic casing and right sides together, fold them in half so we match up these short edges. And then we're gonna sew this using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then we'll press this seam open and repeat with both pieces. Here's what that looks like sewn up. And then we're going to fold it in half, wrong sides together, and press it lengthwise. Here is that pressed. Now we're going to join this to the sleeve of our jacket. So with right sides together, we are going to pin our sleeve cuff to our sleeve. I'm going to match up the seam on the cuff with the seam underarm seam on the sleeve. So now we're going to take this to the machine and sew around the sleeve opening. We're going to leave a little two inch opening so that we can run elastic into this casing. So I sewed that seam and then I pressed the cuff outwards and the seam allowance towards the sleeve and I still have this little opening back here. So I'm going to grab my sleeve hem elastic. You can find suggested elastic lengths in the beginning of your instructions. So I have two lengths cut of that. The first one I've attached a safety pin to and then I'm just going to stick it into this little opening that we left on the casing and start inching the elastic through the opening. As you're doing this, just try to be aware of not, um, as you're doing this, just try to not get it twisted along the way because that's a pain in the bunions, I'll tell you. When you get to the other side, you can pull your elastic out. You're gonna overlap your ends by about a half inch and then you'll take this to the sewing machine and use a zigzag stitch to join this into a loop. You may want to kind of hold this and then feel around to make sure that your elastic hasn't gotten twisted anywhere along the way. Here's that sewn up, and then you're just going to pull it, work it into the sleeve, and then you can kind of just do this a few times to get the elastic distributed. And now we are going to close up this little opening that we've left. So we'll just do a little straight stitch right here, being careful to avoid sewing on top of the elastic that we just inserted. Here's that done. And now we're going to set the body of our jacket aside for a moment and we will work on the lining. Now we get to start assembling the lining. So here I have my side front lining and my front facing and these are going to be sewn right sides together. We have two along this curved edge that match up. 
So I'm just going to flip this right sides together and we'll start at the notch because I think that that is the easiest place to start. We're sewing together two shapes that are pretty different so um, it can be a little finicky but we just use more pins and work it together slowly and it will all fall into place. You're gonna sew this using a 3 8 inch seam allowance going all the way down and we'll repeat it on both sides. To help the seam allowance lie flatter, we are going to clip along this curved seam just every couple inches. We're clipping right up to the seam allowance without snipping through it. And then now you're going to press this seam allowance towards the lining. These next couple steps are going to be really familiar because they're really similar to when we sewed the body of the jacket. Right now I've got my two front lining pieces right sides facing up. I'm placing my back right side facing down and we're going to join it at the shoulders just like we did when we were sewing the main fabric. Here I have those shoulder seams sewn and then pressed open and now just like we did before we're going to join the sleeve lining to the body matching the single notches on the front with the single notches on the sleeve and the double notches on the back with the double notches on the sleeve uh, and then we will press that seam towards the sleeve. Our sleeve hems need to be pre-pressed under to make it easy for us when we join the sleeve hem to the body, we want to press this lower edge under 3 eighths of an inch. Because I don't really want to press my fabric too much because it's a synthetic and it's very melty, I am going to actually mark 3 eighths of an inch and I'm just going to use a regular pen because I'm never going to see this again. So I have marked 3 eighths of an inch and then now I'm going to continue sewing and after my side seams are sewn up, then I'm going to fold this under and baste it with a needle and thread, but I'll show you that. So for now, I just have marked it on the wrong side of the fabric. Next, we're going to fold our lining pieces in half right sides together, just like we did with the body where we're matching up the underarms of the sleeve and the side seams, and we'll sew this all in one go, just like we did before, repeating on both sides. Here are those side seams sewn up, and now we can do that sleeve hem. So we're just folding under at this line that we drew. I'm just going to put a couple of clips to hold it in place. This is just a temporary basting stitch to hold this in place, so it does not need to match, and honestly it's kind of good if it doesn't because then it'll be easier to find and remove. So I'm just doing a long running stitch to hold this seam allowance under. So I'm going to repeat that on the other side. Okay, so here we have the body of our jacket and we're going to join it to our lining. I've got my the body of my jacket right side facing out and then I've got my lining inside out and we're just going to stick the jacket inside of the lining so that we can have them right sides together. Let's start with the sleeve. It's like I'm dressing the jacket in lining. <laughs> And we're going to tuck the collar in so that it's sandwiched between the lining and the main fabric. You want to make sure nothing's twisted in there, but it doesn't have to be perfectly aligned at the moment. In this step, we are going to be matching up our center fronts of our lining and our main fabric. So the facing is right sides together with the main fabric. I'm going to match up this corner and then we're matching up going around the neckline as well. So these shoulder seams are going to match up. We've got a double notch at center back that matches up. We've got another shoulder seam that matches up. Coming around the other side, we've got the corner and then down the center front. I'll add a couple more notches in or I'll add a couple more clips in for good measure and we're going to take this to the machine and sew it using a 3 8 inch seam allowance going all the way around. So up one side, around the neckline, and then back down the other side. So it's a big seam. If you were making the, the hooded version, your hood would just be sandwiched in there just like the collar is sandwiched in there. So take this to the machine and sew! Here's that all sewn up, so I'm just going to clip these corners 
We did this before where you just get in as close as you can to the corner without snipping through. We're gonna clip around the curve of the neckline. And now we'll flip this right side out and give it a good press. Here that is all pressed in place and our jacket is starting to look really good. Next up we are just joining the lining to the main fabric of our jacket around the hem. So we're going to use a long straight stitch to baste a quarter of an inch from the edge going around here and that's just going to prepare our hem to add the facing. Combining that with the next step we can save a little bit of time. So the following step is going to be that we are edge stitching around our jacket so we're going up the center front, around our the notch of our lapel, and then we are going around this under collar an eighth of an inch from the edge, and then we'll come back around the other side and come back down. And this is just gonna add um, a more like finished look and also hold everything in place a little better. So if you want, you could do the basting around here and then all the way up around while you're at the sewing machine. Here is that step done. So web sewn around here. And there's the hem. This next step involves our hem facing. So we've got a front hem facing and a back hem facing. On the front hem facing we have two pieces and then on the back we have one cut on the fold. So you'll notice that on our hem facings there are notches on one of the curved edge as well as these short edges. And that's true for both the front and the back hem facing. So we're going to pin these right sides together along the short ends and we're matching notches. And you want to make sure you're matching a notch here because if you were to accidentally match this side then your hem's not going to fit. So matching this short end um, and we're going to sew down this short end using a 3 8 inch seam allowance and we'll repeat on both sides. Here is our hem facing sewn up. I sewed the seam at 3 8 of an inch and then I pressed it open. Also while I was there, I went ahead and did the next step, which is to add a pressing guide. So we're going to stitch 3 8 of an inch from the edge going along the unnotched edge of our facing all the way around. Then we're going to press the facing down. We're using this seam line as a guide. With the curved edges, it's easier to sew yourself a guide rather than trying to freehand press it. Um, it just helps have everything fall nicely into place. So now I'm going to go press this under. And now I'm going to press these short edges under 3 eighths of an inch. Here is that done and now our hem facing is ready to be applied to the hem of our jackets. Here I have my hem right side out and now I'm going to pin the facing right sides together to the hem of the jacket and we're matching notches here so we're pinning the raw unnotched edge to the hem of our jacket and we're matching up notches and side seams. So now we're going to take this to our sewing machine and sew it using a 3 8 inch seam allowance sewing all the way across our hem. Now we are going to grade this seam. Because my uh, lining is kind of thick I'm going to try to trim the seam allowance down a little bit just to reduce bulk. We'll be cutting the seam allowance on our lining down. Okay, so now we are going to take this to the iron and press this facing away. I'm going to press it down first. So I pressed it down and now I'm going to fold it all the way over and press it again, making sure to preserve this pre-pressed upper edge. And then we're going to pin it in place. Okay, so now I have that pressed up into place and I'm going to do some pinning to hold it. I'm preserving that pre-pressed folded edge and then I'm anchoring it kind of at the beginning and the side seams and then I'm going to go in in the middle and add more pins in. Now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're edge stitching around our hem facing and we're actually going to do this on all four sides of the facing. So we like I like to start at a side seam so that this can be a continuous uh, seam without any sort of like ends on the center front. So you're going to start here and you'll sew an eighth of an inch from this folded edge going down all the way to the hem. Then you'll pivot, go down this short edge, pivot again, and then you're going to sew an eighth of an inch from this folded edge all the way around, coming down, come back up this side, 
and then all the way around an eighth of an inch from this folded edge coming back to where you started from. Here is that hem sewn up and I love how it looks, just kind of how it holds the hem really nicely in place. Now we're gonna close up our sleeve hem. So I have here my lining is pulled down my sleeve and I made sure that it wasn't twisted along the way. And I'm going to sew it in place just above this, just above the seam allowance right here from where we joined the cuff to our main fabric. And you can do this by pinning it really carefully and then stitching in the ditch at your sewing machine. I'm going to sew it by hand so that it has a, an invisible finish. So I start by matching up these underarm seams and then I'll work my way around. And I'm just sewing on the seam allowance on the main fabric, not through the arm of the jacket. I'm going to sew this using a ladder stitch. So I just grab a little bit on the lining and then I grab a little bit from that seam allowance and then I'll keep working my way around. All that's left to do is to add buttons or snaps. I'm going to be adding snaps to mine and you're going to, if you're also doing snaps, I'll link the snaps that are down below that I got off of wawak.com. Um, they're a great place for sewing notions, but this has been a lifesaver for me. It sets snaps really nicely and it's not too pricey. I think I paid like $15 for it. And yeah, I prefer snaps on jackets like this just because I think it goes with the casual vibe and they're easier to like open and close. If you are opting for buttons, then you'll just follow your sewing machine's instructions for sewing your buttonholes and then sew on your buttons in your preferred method and your beachcomber is done. I hope this sew along was helpful. Feel free to leave any questions and comments down below. Um, yeah, and I will see you next time.